I wonder what Alec has been up to. This content is always amusing. Hey, I remember looking into this stuff. That's really cool. Maybe I should try and make a ring from it. Been a while since I made one. The thing about having a machine shop is that not every job has to be a tool build. So this time, I'll make some rings. But not just any rings. Titanium Damascus rings. <sighs> Bollocks. This is Titanium Damascus, or Timascus if you're that way inclined. For those unaware, it follows the same principle as Damascus steel, hence the name. It is also referred to as Makume Gane, which roughly translates to wood grain metal. Easy to see the reason why. Here's a piece of Damascus steel for comparison. The material is made by forging two or more different grades of titanium together into a laminate and twisting it to form this pattern. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay, I'll admit it's not a perfect representation, but hopefully it gets the point across. On to the build. I'm going to face the part off first. Machining titanium is a little bit like attempting a burn up your drill bit any percent speed run. Ideally I would use solid carbide drills, but just buying the material for this build has depleted my budget for the video, so high speed steel it is. Now that the centre is drilled out, let's move on to boring. I have to say, whilst it's not easy to machine, it's a lot better than I expected. My secret weapon, once again, is a solid carbide boring bar. It's truly a game changer when you consider the size of my lathe. I'm aiming for 17.58mm, or size O in the ring size chart. 17.59? Yeah, I'll take that. I have a love-hate relationship with parting blades. Mostly hate. However, the Sandvik one I got off eBay works remarkably well. I want the rings to be 4mm wide, so I'll part it off slightly over that to give me some room for the final cut. Okay, this is effectively an obligatory part of making anything out of titanium. The camera doesn't quite pick up just how bright that is. Same steps as before for the second one. Face, bore to size, part off. Simple.
I'm aiming for 25.5 millimeters on this one. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. As you can see, the surface finish is a bit sh <laughs> Let's fix that. I'll use a couple of parallels to clamp the ring square in the chuck. It's a great technique if you have a reference surface that's already machined, which I do. Let's remove the sharp bit from the parting and take it down to size. Once again, I'm aiming for four millimeters. Yep, that'll do nicely. Now, just because I'm making a bit of jewellery doesn't mean that I can't overdo the build process. I'll start with the OD mandrels. They should look something like this. I turn the shafts down to a size that will fit my collet chuck. Nothing exciting here, just a lot of aluminium swarf. I then turned a small shoulder for the ring to register against, then drilled and tapped an M4 hole for the washer to clamp down on. I secretly borrowed Tony's chuck swapping attachment to see what the fuss is all about. Okay, now let's turn the OD down to size. Chamfer it, chamfer it. Huh? Who said that? Come on, chamfer it, you know you want to. No, Brandon, go away. Not everything needs a chamfer. Anyway, where was I? Now that the rings are to size, let's start shaping them. I'll start with a file to take most of the material off the corners. No, this doesn't count as chamfering. Shut up. Next I'll work through the grades of sandpaper. I'll start with 180 grit emery cloth, then 400, then all the way to 2000. You can already see the Damascus pattern coming through. That's very cool. Now I need a way to hold the ring so I can polish the insides. Time for some more mandrels. Once again, since I'm making two rings, I'll need two mandrels. If I was making rings en masse, this method would absolutely not work since I'd have to make a new mandrel for each size. Still, two is a number that I can cope with. Let's add a small shoulder for the ring to register against. There we go, that's a fantastic fit. Alright, this video has been quite lathe heavy, so let's head over to the mill. Don't worry, this will be quick. I'll use the saw to cut four slits 90 degrees apart, which will clamp down on the ring, a little bit like a collet. I originally thought about using a Jubilee clip, but I decided on a 3D printed clamp instead. It has a far lower risk of horrendous finger slicing action. That feels really solid. Excellent. Now, sanding the inside diameter. Don't use this video as a how-to tutorial. I'm fully aware of the risks involved here. 
I'm sticking my finger in a fast spinning chuck on a machine that doesn't know nor care about the difference between metal and flesh. Right, that's one side done. Since I can't get to the other side using this method, I'll effectively have to do this twice. Here comes the coolant! Okay, that's the rings done. Let's polish them to a mirror finish. Blimey, these look great. Really happy with that surface finish too. Well, there you have it. A couple of titanium Damascus rings. Thanks for watching. I'm just messing with you. Time for the bit that everyone's waiting for. I have to say, that is really quite something. Remember the whole thing about two different grades of titanium being mushed together? Well, now we can see it in action. Right. Let's pack these two up and take them to the recipients of this project. What? Did I not mention these are gifts? Hmm. My bad. This is Adam, and his lovely wife Georgina. As I mentioned in my Dead Blow Hammer video, I really like making gifts for the special people in my life. So here's another instance of that. Amazing! Have you made... No, you've made us matching! I'm so sick! It fits perfectly. Oh good. You know what? It really smooth as well. Oh my god, like, it's honestly so, Eric, it's so amazing! Smooth. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.